Hello, this is the first of two videos that captures a conversation on change and loss in the time of COVID-19. This video includes the introduction, thoughts around identifying what we're experiencing and feeling, and ideas around how we can empower ourselves to continue in this challenging time. So without further ado, to the conversation. Hello and welcome. I am Kristen Anderson. I'm one of the area directors within Residence Life at Linfield College. Uh, as has been said many times in many different places and ways, this, there's a lot going on right now. We're in a very odd space, especially in our communities. Um, and there's very big changes and uh, all of these huge, huge changes that have happened um, and big things that have come about have left me feeling very shifted and rocked and I think that's something that I've been seeing in my work with students as well is that a lot of people are having very different um, experiences, emotions, and questions that have all come out from and through this, um, this time in our lives. So I'm here today with two of my wonderful colleagues, Reverend David Massey and Rabbi Gary Ellison, uh, <laughs> to discuss just that and to get into some perspectives on um, these experiences. So can you both share a little bit about what you do and how you relate to this topic? Gary, go ahead. Thank you, Kristen. Um, my work um, in 30 years as a rabbi and uh, chaplain, the last almost 10 years uh, working as a university chaplain, has given me insight into how loss and grief um, impact people's lives. And um, it's been a real privilege to to serve and help people understand and and help to normalize their experiences. And I, I look forward to addressing those specific concerns in, in our time. And I'm David Massey. And um, in my 35 plus years, I'm a little older than Gary. Uh, <laughs> I have been also working with uh, loss and grief uh, both with clinical training like Gary has had, uh, but also in my, in my work as a uh, college chaplain and professor and also as a pastor at one time. Um, in fact, I teach a class called Living with Loss at Linfield. And I also, um, my doctoral work is in what's called thanatology, which is the study of death and dying, grief and loss. So loss is very much central to my work. Thank you both so much for joining me, for being willing to do this, for um, contributing in this way to help our community. So Glad greatly appreciate it. Um, so before we jump in too much, I wanted to give a little bit of a roadmap of what we're going to talk about. So we will be talking about how do we identify what we're experiencing kind of on a basic level, uh, and how do we, without judgment, look at the future and what pattern um, we want, we can intentionally choose to try to move forward or find a path to um, continue in these times. Uh, and also note something we won't address is situations that are maybe elevated or complicated to the point where somebody um, should be working with a trained professional like a therapist or a counselor. Uh, in general, we're all huge advocates of therapy <laughs> and strongly recommend doing that. Um, today we're going to be talking about a pretty uh, basic level or, or some of those more common experiences that are happening. So with that acknowledged, how do we recognize or identify some of the things that we're experiencing or feeling right now? Well, Kristen, I think it, it's best to start with the recognition that there are certain basic truths in experiencing loss in life. Um, change is loss. The Buddhists make that clear to us. Uh, when a leaf drops to the ground in the fall, it teaches impermanence, it's a universal truth. But today when I go for a walk, which I've been trying to get out of this house as much as I can to not be too cooped up, and I see all the blossoms coming out, I'm reminded that after that loss in the fall, there's the regeneration uh, in the spring and things come around. So it's a natural, unavoidable process that's part of the cycle of, of life itself. Um, so the first truth is that change is loss. Gary? I'd like to offer um, the importance of taking a step back and um, 
helping ourselves not be so judgmental, both for others and, and for ourselves. So when we feel sad or hurt or frustrated or upset, um, it's okay. And the, the cycle of the should and the should not um, is something we need to, to step back from. Um, the, the feeling that I shouldn't be feeling this way or I should be doing better at, at um, we need to just give ourselves a break and, and try and uh, ad adopt a non-judgmental stance. And not feel guilty, right, Gary? If, you know, because those on the front line are putting out so much, that's okay. I mean, that's a natural response, but, you know, there are other ways that you can help. Right. And, calling people. And I, and I think the, the sense of um, feeling guilty comes from the shoulds and the should not right. um, mm -hmm. category. So, yeah. Be kind to yourself. <laughs> Absolutely. That's foundational. Um, and accepting of others. Mm -hmm. Now, Kristen, another uh, basic truth is that this journey of dealing with loss is highly individualized. We all do this differently. Um, your feelings are normal. They are acceptable uh, without judgment. The key is what will be our response? to that sort of pent up energy we're feeling from our emotions. We need to think about maybe, you know, what's our normal pattern of dealing with loss? Uh, think about our whole life sort of history and how have we dealt with stress in the past? Typically the way we have historically dealt with stressors will be the way we deal with them now, just in a more heightened, more intense way, typically. Now, if it's different, then you also want to identify that and name that because that's also okay if it's at least uh, beneficial to you. Um, but um, people process this differently. Some are more verbal and their activity is to talk about it or to cry out loud or to be very public. Others, their activity is more isolated by themselves, uh, feeling like need to fix something or do something. And they both have the same amount of emotional intensity, but they have a, they're just different voices and processing this. And they're both good. In fact, we're probably all some sort of combination of those. Mm -hmm. So happy, being able to, I, to give yourself the break of not necessarily feeling bad if you're not doing it the way your best friend is or your parents are or someone else is important, that it's very individualized um, is, is also critical. Thank you, David. The other thing that I would add is that we tend to think about um, loss or some change as, um, as negative, and it feels that way often. The reality is that not all loss is bad. Right. In, in loss, we can discover and uh, uncover new connections new relationships. I know that I have during this time, um, reconnecting with people um, instead of, you know, commuting or even walking to class. That that time is is open and uh, is an opportunity to revive or um, create new connections with folks. And mm -hmm. being open to that um, can be very healing and and well, and new skills, Gary. Some of us have had to learn to do teach our classes online. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty proud of myself. Record a Zoom, a Zoom. Yeah. Right. So that that's another positive thing, and and, and all those positive things should be embraced. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> so, in light of these, as you're calling them, the, like basic truths, uh, how do we? Kind of empower ourselves to continue in in this time there's with there's both joy and a lot of potentially heaviness well Christian I think we begin by naming what we feel and uh, what we face 
because there's power in naming things. Mm -hmm. You know, then you bring them into the light. And so recognizing our losses or being able to identify what our losses are. Now, there are different types of losses. losses. There are obvious losses and not so obvious losses, for instance. An obvious loss, particularly for college students, would be the loss of campus life and all that entails, okay? And the independence that comes with that and, you know, the, the camaraderie and the complexities and all of that. So you, you lose that sense of campus life. But with that may be some not so obvious losses, like feeling cheated out of an experience, you know, or an event that you were looking forward to, like the luau or uh, wild stock or some other event that another college might be having. Um, it's particularly true for seniors because the not so obvious losses there might be, um, you know, a loss of sort of the meaningfulness of approaching graduation and sharing that excitement with fellow students. And then there's the more obvious loss of the ceremony itself. Now, that's not really lost, we hope, but simply delayed on our campus. And most campuses are trying to figure out a way of that being the, the case. And the loss but of it, nothing else of what we imagine it to be, right, or imagined right. it to be. Yeah, what we dreamed it to be, yeah. and where it would be, the location, and that image. So yeah. yes, absolutely. That's a good point. And um, it can also, you know, losing campus life can be felt while you're at home, maybe with your parents, because if you're back home with your parents, a not so obvious loss that's probably a very real felt loss is the loss of some independence that you were accustomed to. Mm -hmm. Suddenly you might feel like you're 15 again. <laughs> <laughs> that happened to me during grad school until I was in my mid thirties, you know, when I'd go home. But um, those are not so obvious losses. All of those, both the obvious ones and the not so obvious ones need to be named because they all deserve attention and processing, giving voice to. And because some of them might be troubling us more than others, and that will help us. And there are also unexpected losses that can occur, like a loss of security uh, from the uncertainty or a sense of rapid change that's going on with this COVID-19 thing. Um, there's this, it's like things are in limbo right now. And it's like, when we think we got to figure it out, it changes again. Well, that makes us feel uncertain and, and insecure sometimes. That's normal. That's okay. It will pass, but naming that is important. Mm -hmm. And then uh, sometimes a loss of direction and purpose. Seniors worrying about if there's going to be jobs for them when they graduate, or uh, will my major still be able to play out the way I had thought? Now, it's likely that these will all be addressed in a way that will be very satisfactory but everybody's having to adjust. So, and then maybe loss of hope. You might be worried about family members who might be not as healthy or maybe have been infected, or you might be worried about family members whose jobs have been impacted. Um, and that leaves a helpless feeling. And, and so you, 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 you struggle with that. Well, all of those are real and okay, but need to be named so that they could be processed. Thank you, David. Yeah. I, I'm thinking about our reactions mm -hmm. to novel circumstances, to things that we never expected. And, you know, the initial thing is and, and this probably happens every day for folks. Initial reactions to changes, to losses, to decisions out of our control. So we may go to the OMG, or we may go to the WTF, whatever that means. <laughs> Ultimately, those responses are real. And, and the one I would add to that is, oh, something more again? There's almost a fatigue with the-, the Absolutely. Of, of this experience. So, and uh, choose your expletive <laughs> for when, when stuff comes your way. 
I would say that most of us have patterns in how we um, confront or respond to um, new and daunting circumstances. I'd like to talk about some of the typical responses that uh, people have in like five categories. The first one is physical responses. Whether you acknowledge them as a response or not, changes in sleep patterns, when you go to bed, how long you sleep. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm digging 10 hours of sleep. <laughs> how we eat, when we eat. You know, we're not, we're not bound to the Dillon. We're not bound to a, a dining facility that, that only serves at certain hours. Um, and sometimes I just feel like I'm spinning. And um, that is what it is. Feeling anxious, feeling lethargic, without motivation physically. I guess I would put in my little caveat here uh, is that if you have prescribed medications, don't stop taking them now uh, without advice from your therapist or a doctor. Mm -hmm. um, keep keep on your regimen. Uh, um, you have it for a reason. The second is emotional. And wow, what a range, right? Frustration, sadness, uncertainty, anxiety, depression, lack of focus. Those are all part of the um, emotional and intellectual um, aspect of, of coping. Third one is social and it's real. I'm missing my roommate. I'm missing my friends. I'm missing my team. I'm missing my club. I'm missing my fraternity, sorority, my associations. Those are, those are really important to acknowledge. And we're finding new ways to connect. And what about those things you're missing? <laughs> the specifics that come with those groups. Right, so find new ways to engage. Mm -hmm. That's, um, and I have not in my life experienced a generation who's more able to do exactly that than uh, students in college right now. They are phenomenal in their, in their resources. And it's just a matter of plugging them in. The, the last piece I want to talk about is um, something that happens for folks and the, the nomenclature is grief bursts. There are times when out of nowhere we get that OMG feeling and it can be physically overwhelming, emotionally overwhelming, and we don't know why it's happening. It's not anything specific. It can be taking a walk. It can be sitting at home. But all of a sudden, whoosh, I get this, this um, burst of emotion. Understand what it is. It's, it's critical to acknowledge it and say, all right, so this is part of the process. The other thing is that there may be triggers. There may be actual triggers. Um, and a certain time of day when you would work out with your friends or run or, or do a, a team workout or even, even play a game, right? A, 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 a sports event, any of those things when that would have happened and you're not doing that, that can be um, pretty important. But grief bursts can happen anywhere and anytime. Um, and they affect all of our senses and our senses impact it. Um, it's nine o'clock in the morning, I would be in uh, 
biology lab right now, right? Or Friday afternoons, my club meets and well, we're not meeting. Or I went to Albertsons and they had no Kleenex. It, it can be that mundane and still engage a, a lot of our response. What about what about my spirit? What about my 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 spiritual life? We talk, I've talked about emotions. David, what would you say about that? Well, I think that um, sometimes times like this can challenge people's sense of meaningfulness. What you know, my, the normal things I hold on to as my anchors that help me name what's meaningful in life can be shook up. Uh, it can also raise big theological questions. You know. Why did God let this happen? Which is, I don't think the way God works, but it is a, a classic question that gets raised in these moments. And it's okay to ask that question, but um, it's, it's indicative of the fact that you feel um, out of control or uh, a lack of control, maybe. Maybe you don't feel out of control, but a lack of control. And you wonder, is, is there any control going on? Uh, and so what is, what is my role? What is my, uh, how do I fit in all this? How do I, how do I be a part of making this better? Um, those are spiritual questions that deal with purpose and meaningfulness uh, and identity. And, uh, and they can also change one's theological perspective. And that's why processing with someone who can kind of give you perspective can help. Mm -hmm. I, one of the uh, phrases I like to use right now is looking for love in all the right places. Yeah, yeah. A little tweak on the, <laughs> on the original song. Ultimately, this is an opportunity to look for love and to engage our response as an opportunity. You know, Mr. Uh, Roger says, you know, his mother always told him that you know, when there's a trauma going on, look for the helpers to get a sense of hope. Well, as a spiritual person, both of you and I being clergy, um, when I see the helpers, I see the holy, the divine hand. And so, uh, and that's a sign of hope. As do I. And, and I, my own personal theology is um, that I don't look um, at the divine as the source of the COVID virus. No. I see the divine in the response to it. Right. So that's, that's my two shekels. <laughs> as mentioned before, this is the first of two videos that captures this conversation. The next one covers ideas about how we could navigate all of this change and loss. If you have questions, thoughts, or want to talk with any of us, please let us know. Our contact information is on the screen, and further resources are on the next one. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a good day.